ahead and get this party started. Uh, I've unshared, Joel, you can now share. And uh, just quick introduction, I'm Scott, Cobra uh, Firing Systems. Uh, if everyone, why don't you guys go, just jump right in, introduce yourself as part of the team, and then we'll get jump into this. Uh, I'm Chris, talk to probably several of you guys on there. I'm Jonah, I also work for Cobra Firing Systems. Nice to see you all. I'm Zach. Zach does customer service, you know, a little bit. What yeah, you do. I, you know, I probably talked to a lot of these, a lot, a lot of everyone, you know, but I do, yeah, support. Everybody cheers for Zach. Joel. Cheers. And, and Joel. Joel. And Joel. The golden boy. All right. Scott kicks All right. Off. Yeah, so let's get this going. Kick it off. Kick it off. Q. That's your Q. Q. That's your Q, Joe. Joel. Okay. Yeah. I getting a little intro for us, but yeah. uh, I will take it away. So we're going to spend about 10 minutes with a PowerPoint. And then from there, we're going to transition into show creator and you can actually access a free trial. I'll talk about that in a little bit. So you can actually follow along with us while we go through this. So first off here, we're going to just talk about what's going to be covered in this webinar. We're going to talk about what is a script and the types of scripts you can create. We're gonna talk about how to create scripts. We're obviously gonna talk a lot about Cobra Show Creator, overview of what it is, how to use it, and specifically what is new in the Cobra Show Creator web-based version. Within Show Creator, we're gonna talk about the My Fireworks section, preferences, reports, and a lot more. Creating scripts with Show Creator, and of course, exporting your script and your audio file once you're done. So first off, what is a script? So a script is a defined list of events used to create a show. There's three main components, and those consist of time, channel, and queue. And this is just an example. So in this example, you'll see here at five seconds, we have channel one, Q1 firing, and at 10 seconds, we have channel two, Q1 firing, and then it just pretty much goes on just like that. You have your time that you want something to fire, the channel you want to fire, and whatever queue you want to fire. There are a lot of other components to a script, most of this is fairly advanced stuff that we're not really going to talk about today. Obviously, you have Q&A. We'll try to hit those as we do it. Our plan right now is to potentially do a in-depth scripting seminar at a later time. So what are the types of scripts? First off, we have an auto script. And so this basically means you want to define all of your events in advance and you push one button and the entire show fires. You just sit back and watch the show. The next type of script is a manual script, which we commonly refer to as a step script. And so what this means is you're assigning the step button on your 18 or two control panel or the step button on your dead man control to trigger an event. And each time you push that step button, it fires another event. And the last type of script is a combination of both of those types. So step and time where you can have a step event that then triggers a, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading chat here. Uh, so you have a step event that then triggers a series of other events, right? And we're gonna go through and create each of these types of scripts within Show Creator so you guys can see exactly how to make all of these. So how do we create a script? So you can use a program such as Excel. Most of us already have that today. You can use any other program that creates a CSV file pretty much. You can use Show Creator or you can use advanced programs such as Finale Fireworks. Obviously, we're gonna focus primarily on Show Creator. So introduction to Cobra Show Creator. It's a light scripting software. This is just a screen grab of what show creators like. Use this to create both step and time scripts as well as fire musicals. It includes things such as a firework database, which is down here on this bottom left image. It has features such as show reports, queue labels, product list, and queue reports. Again, we're going to go through all of these in depth once we get into show creator. And one of the best things about this is it's extremely reasonably priced. Right now it's priced at $62.99 US dollars for a two year license. It's way more advanced than Excel and way cheaper than other options on the market. What's new with the web-based show creator? Well, first off, it is web-based and supports offline mode. And so what do I mean by that? So basically you have to use Google Chrome. We do not support other browsers. And once you go to show creator one time, it's usable offline. So basically when you create a script within show creator, it's saved in your 
uh, browser cache, which would allow you to access it offline. So if you're in the field and need to make a quick edit, you can do that, still export your show. There are some features that are not allowed when, off, when in offline, such as the My Fireworks section. But for making quick edits, last minute edits in the field, it works out really well. And then if you do make edits, once you come back online, that information is then sent back to our server. All right, so it is support on multiple devices. So on the previous show creator, you had to buy a license key for every device you used, right? So if you had a home computer and a work computer, you had to buy two licenses. On this version, you actually log out and then log in at another computer. We understand a lot of people might have a home computer, work computer, you might want to script on your lunch break, right? So you can log out from your home computer, log in on your work computer and still script during lunch. It also um, has a timeout feature. So if you forget to log out within 30 minutes of an activity, it'll automatically log you out so you don't have to worry about it. So that way when you go to log in on your work computer, it'll be all good. Also much faster and smoother than the previous show creator, such as the waveform, the event scrolling, and we'll go through some of that stuff once we get into show creator. Has a much more dynamic waveform. All the features such as being able to zoom in and out of the waveform, adjust the waveform height are still there, but we've added in other features such as pre-fire time, lift time, and fire durations on the waveform. So you can actually see the duration of your firework on your waveform. This is probably the most popular one in my opinion, and that's the ability to auto increment queues. So when I say, hey, this is channel one, it's gonna say, oh, Q one's the next queue available and automatically sign that to you or to that channel. You can also drag and drop step events. Has integrated live chat. So if you're scripting during the day, there's a little icon in the bottom right corner. You click on that, ask a question, and normally Zach will be the person that answer questions for you. And if we're not actively on it, we'll respond to you whenever we're available. Um, so at this point in time, I'm planning on moving over to the web version to actually go through that. So if you want to follow along with me, you can go to cobrashowcreator.com, create an account, and there's a free trial that you can use. Someone did ask why migrate to a web-based product? That's primarily because it allows us to offer support. That's actually a big thing, really. It allows us to offer support not only to PC, but also Mac users. The previous version did not have Mac support. It also allows us to send out updates much more frequently. And even since we released it, month and a half ago or somewhere in there, we've already released several patches thanks to them. So, all right, so at this point, let me switch over to show creator. So again, if you want to follow along on your own computer, you just go to cobrashowcreator.com, create an account and you will have access, sorry about that, you'll have access to the trial version. And anything you do in the trial will be saved. So if you decide to activate later on, you can still use that show you created in your trial on your activated version. So the first thing I want to mention is you can actually save a shortcut on your desktop. So in the top right corner of my screen here, there's this little menu icon. And if you click this, there's an install Cobra show creator option. And when clicking that, it's going to save a, a link to your desktop. So you don't have to open your browser and go to show creator each time. You can just click that on your, on your desktop. So let's go through just kind of like what is on my screen here, right? So first off on the left side here, this is all my navigation, if you will. So we have our new show, how to create a new show. And we'll go through a lot of this more in depth as we continue along. How to import a show. You can open a previously created show, the save show feature. Shows settings, all of your reports, how to export your script and audio file, preferences. Um, there's help menu, keyboard shortcuts. Um, I see some questions popping up, so I might just hit those real quick. One's asking about the trial version if one of the other panelists wants to Yeah, I think that. that one's, we can help that. And we're doing a lot of these questions too, Joel, a lot. Like okay. I'm just answering them while, while you're going, so. Yep, okay. So I'll just keep on going then. Mm -hmm. All right, so then down here at the entire bottom of our screen, this is our um, waveform slash show timeline, if you will. So you'll have all of your times at the top here. That includes, you'll see as I'm moving my mouse, which is the red line in this case, my mouse position time is changing. If I click, you'll see the last selected position now is the time, which is where the playhead is currently sitting. This is the time in the show. So if I push play, that time will start counting. Time remaining is if I already have my show, it's gonna tell me how long till the end of the show that I already created. And the time since last queue, once I add a queue, it's gonna say five seconds since you just passed the last queue. 
down here in the bottom left is the ability to change audio files. Ability to zoom into your waveform, change the waveform height. We'll go into those more when we go into the pirate musical support. Um, go to the beginning of the song, go to the end of the song, play the song. We'll talk about this once we create timed and step events. Ability to speed up or slow down your playback and then volume for your audio. And then everything here on your right side is your fireworks section. So both the fireworks section as well as left navigation are expandable or collapsible. So you can actually just click on this bar here and it's gonna collapse the, um, the left navigation. You can also click and drag it. So if you want to make this um, event space here in the middle larger to have more room to work with, you can absolutely do that. So I wanna go, go ahead and create a basic script at this point. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the new show option. And first off, it's gonna say, what, Lynn, what show do you wanna, what do you name the show? We're just gonna say basic. Apparently caps lock is on. And it's gonna ask, do you want any custom columns? You'll see that position is already defined for me because I have it preset to use position. And I'll mention that once we create our show, as well as the firmware version. You'll see my firmware version is set to 5.0 because I have it set as my equipment is on 5.0. So we'll create the show. And we're not doing audio yet. So we're gonna say no to having music. It's gonna take just a second to build the waveform down there. Okay. So just waiting for this to load in here. It's not a long awkward pause, but if you wanna drink here, you know, no judgment. So the red line all the way at the end here is at zero seconds. So if I click the add timed event button here, it's gonna add an event at zero seconds. So let's go to, let's, let's just add a few events first. So let's say if I click somewhere back here on the far left, you'll see it's showing 20 seconds. And I click add timed event, it's gonna add that also at 20 seconds. Let's just hypothetically say we have a couple cues in here. Okay, see so that one's at 49 seconds. Now I want to say, hey, at zero seconds, I want to fire this firework. Or at 20 seconds, I want to fire this firework. That's where the My Fireworks section comes into play. So you'll see I already have a ton of different fireworks in here. There's several ways to add fireworks in here. On the top right corner, you'll see an Add button. There's the ability to add manually, right? So if you click on that, excuse me, and just type in all this information all these detailed information. A lot of these details are used in some of our reports. So I do recommend populating those if you can. And once you add that, it's gonna save in your list here. You can also add from the Wiki Fireworks. So if I click on that, it's gonna prompt Wiki Fireworks. So you do have to be have an account and logged in here. Um, and then once you do that, you're able to access the database on Wiki Fireworks to add into Show Creator. So just a slight delay here on my side, but that's okay. Yeah, so now you'll see I've already on my previous session selected to see all of comments. And then here's all the list of comments currently on the Wiki Fireworks. You'll see there's a add to my fireworks button. So if I click into these buttons, you'll say successfully added firework. And so I could literally click on a few of these guys. I added some 35 millimeter dominator comments. And when I come back here at the very bottom of my list, through these couple hundred fireworks, <laughs> you'll see the 35 millimeter dominator comment I just added, right? So that's how you can use Wiki. You can also bulk import. I do see a, someone asked about how you do that. And here it is. So you click on bulk import, brings up a new window. There is a sample CSV file that you can download. And as long as your file matches the the columns that is in the sample file, it will upload. So you just click here to add whatever bulk import file you want to add. Also, if you already have Show Creator on the PC, your My Fireworks will transfer over to the web-based version. So it's not like you have to re-import all those fireworks. Yes, Cobra does technically manage Wiki. Um, Scott, I don't know if you want to comment on updates on that. Yeah, sure. So uh, real quick, so we're fully aware that, so the Wiki is really a publicly maintained consumer contributing website, hence the term Wiki. So the public can kind of come in and make changes, additions. The great thing about that is the public can contribute. The downside about that is the public's managing it. So it may not be as thorough or as accurate as one might think. I can absolutely tell you that we are fully aware of the kind of pros and cons of the Wiki and are absolutely in the process of 
working on an alternative solution that's more comprehensive, um, not just within the 1.4 arena for consumer product, but also within the within the 1.3 arena um, coming soon. Go ahead and drink to that one. So that's it. <laughs> um, that also ans kind of answers John's question. He had a question about European libraries and databases, and that is uh, planned with what Scott just mentioned. Okay. Alrighty, so now we have all of our fireworks inserted in here. If I have a row highlighted, which if you just click the queue number here, or the, the event number, I should say, you uh, can highlight a row, and then in the My Fireworks section, there's an insert button. You see it says insert into event row. If I just click that, it inserts it right into my event. Um, a couple things, so let's say I have a couple hundred fireworks like I do, and you wanna find a very specific firework, there's a search bar up here, you can search by name, but if it'll also search by brand, duration, or whatever. So if I type in, for example, 36, you'll see that it brought up all my 36 shot cakes. So it's not just searching by firework title. It can search by, uh, for example, 76 Pro Line, which I have a ton of fireworks in here from them. So you'll see all those are now showing in my list. So it's dynamic in the fact that it searches all of those different categories. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a few more items here to our script. I'm just selecting ones at random. So when I do this, you'll see we have a duration of 25, 27, and eight. And then down here on my waveform, we're actually gonna zoom in. You'll see there, there are blue lines. So the vertical line is my queue, and the horizontal line is the duration of that queue. So in this case, the queue that fires at approximately 20 seconds has a duration of 27 seconds. So you kind of see that hovering over here. You also notice that right here, there's nothing firing. So one of the things we did in this new version is allow you to see when stuff is actually firing and when things are not firing. It just allows you to easily create a show, especially if there's no music. All right, so there are. I just wanna chime in quickly. Um, anyone that's having activation or any issues in the application right now, just open a chat on the bottom right of the new Cobra Show Creator so I can help you versus using the, the Q&A here. Ah, yeah, so that chat he's referring to is this button down here in the bottom right. So if you click on that, you'll see, I've already talked to Zach on this before testing it out, but if you type in your message, Zach will get that. Okay. All right, so does anyone have any questions thus far about just basic scripts? We're gonna move on now to step scripts. I'm reading questions right now. We're kind of also hitting those. We're probably answering. Yes, them. I am. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about those in a little bit. Leave them up in the on the Q and A. We'll okay. talk about those in a second. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. Oh, before we do the step script, I want to show you that you can't import shows you already have. So there's the import show feature right here. When I click on that, it's going to prompt a new screen. You can import CSV files from other scripts you've already used, or you can import a Cobra script maker file from the old show creator. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that real quick. Click on this thing here. And to get your old script files, normally come down here to your C drive, and then you'll see like a Cobra folder, right? Double click that, show saves. And then here's just a few shows I've done in the past. So if you click on that, you'll see a CSM file. And when I click to open that, and click import existing show. It'll take just a little bit here and it'll show all my information for that show that I can then import into the new show creator. Yeah. Someone asked, do you have to use time at the bottom? No, you do not have to use time at the bottom. Meaning you don't have to put durations in. You can simply just add cues and create a script. Okay, so let's go back here and let's go ahead and move on with a step script. So we're gonna do a new show again. Back on the step. Create show. With a step script, we don't do music because if you use Cobra Audio Box, it'll actually pause the audio. So I always say no music. And then here, we're just waiting for the waveform to draw again. So when I create a new show, both in the basic and step shows, you'll see that I had a position column predefined, there's an option within my preferences to have standard custom columns. So if you always use columns such as position or angle or notes, you can define those within your preferences. Um, all the way down 
on the account tab all the way down at the bottom, you'll see I have position defined here. So you can type in whatever custom columns you use frequently. Also from the account preferen preferences account tab, you'll see equipment firmware version. In this case, I have 5 selected. But if you're on older firmware version, you can select 3.0 or one other version. And every time you create a show, it's just gonna default to that version. Okay, so just like we did with the basic script, we're gonna add an event. But instead of clicking the add timed event button here, there's a little toggle button. When I click that, you'll see it says add step event now. And each time I click that, it just toggles between add step and add timed event. So on the add step event, when I click this, it's gonna add at zero seconds, basically a step event. Well, at zero seconds meaning way over here on the left. Um, so then when I assign a firework to it, you'll see 27 seconds. It shows my duration down here on the waveform. Let me zoom in real quick to get a better view. And one of the things we do with step events is when I add another step event, you'll see the playhead is over here at a minute 15 approximately. When I add another step event, you'll see that it moved it over here to snap to the duration to end, to start after the other events duration ends. Um, so if we add another firework in here, and then for example, add another step event, it allows you to kind of see how long you expect the step script to actually last. The colors that you're seeing here are denoting each set of step events. That's gonna be more relevant once we get into the combination step time script. And uh, there's an option to turn that off if that's too much for you. And I'll talk about that once we get into the next script. So, um, and you can also change the snap feature. If you don't like how that's doing that, you can turn that off from your preferences as well. But we did that so that way when you're doing something such as a demo or just you, you're not sure what you're gonna fire, or how long those last, you can add this to the list to kind of see your expected time of your show, right? So in this case with these three events, it's gonna last for about a minute. Okay, so another feature I mentioned is you can click and drag step events. So if we, for example, click on Q2 here, click it and just drag it, I can move it to be Q3. And it's gonna rotate those around. Um, also, I could have shown this on the basic one, but I didn't, the auto incrementing cues. So if I type in channel one here, excuse me, you'll see it added Q1 automatically. Same if I type in Q1 again, or channel one again, channel one again, it's automatically going through my cues. So I don't have to remember where my cues are at on a module, it's just gonna automatically assign those for you. Okay, should mention that there is this save button here that's turned orange, and that's because I've made a change in the last minute. If I do not click that, it does auto save. So just to show you, once I click save, up here at the top of my screen, it does say saved and gives you the time of which it saved. If you don't click that, it just auto saves every minute. All right, so at this point, I'd like to move on and do a step slash timed script combo. So I'm gonna just do a new show. Oops, sorry, not open show. New show, and we're gonna do case, since there is step events, we're going to say no audio. Once this waveform loads again, we'll go ahead and start making this next script. Cheers, Ben. Still a few questions. Let's uh, for ahead. those asking about colors, there's a few people. Um, the colors that you saw in the waveform, those were specifically for the step events, so you can't like pick or choose your own colors. It kind of does it automatically. But that was just a way for the system to highlight the the waveform to show you. I, yeah, I briefly touched. I briefly mentioned that you yeah. can turn that off um, within your preferences. Um, events. Maybe it's waveform. One of these. One of these guys does have that ability. Then you're somewhere. You want me to touch on these two inventory ones, Joel, real quick? Just because yeah, that's fine. Questions. Go ahead. Okay, so, so I'll just I'm going to answer both of these lives. So I'm going to mark these live in here. Uh, so uh, we are we are planning and working on um, inventory features within Show Creator. So the ability to actually maintain inventory levels, um, import them, allocate them uh, for shows. So uh, I don't have too many details on that. It is coming soon. Drink, but uh, that is well in our uh, product roadmap and in the planning planning execution phase. Uh, Scott said, Scotch or whiskey. I'm drinking whiskey. I'm drinking Buffalo Trace. 
Um, okay, so I did find the setting. So the step indicator, you see it's in my preferences, events, step indicators. If I disable that, those colors will go away. Uh, one question, I've had this like three times now, Joel. People are asking if you can bulk add events. Like they, you know, they, they wanna be like bulk add events. And so I don't know if you can touch on that as far as like clicking the button a bunch of times and. Oh, well, ability to add multiples at the exact same time is coming soon. Drink. No, but uh, if you yeah. want to add a ton of events, each time you push the add step or add time event, it's going to add another queue. So if you want five queues at the exact same time, you can literally click five times and it will add five queues. You can also duplicate queues. So if you add one, assign it all, and you say, oh, I have four firing at that time, you just duplicate that queue. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move forward with step and time script. So we're going to add a step event first here and we're gonna just assign some random firework to it. But then now with that step event, let's say I want four things to fire with that manual step event. So I'm gonna to toggle my add step event button to add timed event, okay? And you'll see that it gave a little tail to the step event. And what that is saying is that zero seconds after this step event, it's gonna fire another queue. So if we just, you know, put in the potentially the same, same firework, when I push step, instead of firing one queue, it's gonna fire two queues together. Okay, and you can change that time. Let's say, oh, I don't want it to fire at zero seconds. You just click on the time column there, and it'll bring up this little window. This is pretty much the same as the old version. And you'll say, I want to fire half a second after that step event. So I just change it to 0.5 seconds. You see, it just changed it up here. And then if you want to, you can toggle back to another step event, and you'll see that that step event, let me zoom in for you, snap to the previous step event's duration. And then let's go, you know, whatever, add some more cues here. Go back to my timed event. And let's say a couple seconds after that event, I wanna fire something, not 30 seconds after, I wanna fire like two seconds after. So that's not shown correctly, but it should, it should show right about here two seconds after the, that step event. Basically what the script is telling me is that with each step, each button step, it's gonna fire a timed queue. So in this case, two seconds after that other button step. And you can do multiples too. So if you wanna fire a full sequence, um, you know, live performances is a good example where you're not sure if the performer is gonna be right on time with the traditional song. So you'll do a step event to manually fire once that performer hits the beat that then has a sequence that goes after or what have you. Um, but anyway, from there, we can continue to build on our show. I do wanna mention that with the ability to drag step events, you cannot do that when there is a time event associated to it because we basically, if you drag that step event, the timed event doesn't know where to go with it. So only step, true all step scripts can be dragged. Any uh, questions on, on this thus far? If, if not, we're gonna actually move into um, music, our musicals. There and one thing questions. to mention too, is if you do have any questions, uh, note that, that after this, whether it's, uh, you know, help at cobrafiringsystems.com, our website, or any other avenues, you can always ask us this. So this is not your own op only opportunity to complete the software afterwards and ask this question um, on a personal basis. So a few questions did pop in there. <laughs> Can you have the event time auto advanced by setting a value without using inventory time? Yeah, I mean, you can change the duration at, at your will. So that's just whatever I have already predefined in my firework inventory, right? So if I want to change that from 27 seconds to you know 25 or something like that, I can easily do so. Or if you're just saying you want to clear it out, you can do that as well. Okay, so hopefully Jason answered your question. If not, Skip steps no. when firing live. No, not currently. Not currently. Can you use software on your laptop to work with your H2 via cable? Unfortunately, no. Well, that's, I mean, I guess if you had a control pane on Android emulator, you could technically make that work. Um, it's a much deeper question than probably doing live. Yes, you can fire multiple fireworks on one queue. Yes, there is an undo. So. On the note of the undo, I previously just changed this to zero second duration. So there is a keyboard shortcut option uh, menu down here on the bottom left. So I open that, you'll see we have a ton of different keyboard shortcuts. 
Um, in our case, we're using control Z, which is a pretty, pretty common one. So if I push control Z, you'll see that change from zero to 25. If I push it again, it'll go back to 27. So yeah, you can control Z undo uh, changes. Any group events that can be moved around in a modular fashion, like moving multiples at the same time? I think you can shift multiples, multiple cues. So let me go ahead and open, let me go ahead and create a new show that uses music and we'll add a few cues in there and I'll show you how to bulk shift cues. And then we're gonna talk a lot about um, pre-fire times event, um, lift times and a bunch of other features as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a new show here and this is where it gets a little more fun. Now it's gonna say, do you wanna use music? And this time we're gonna say, heck yeah. And it brings up my audio selector. So these are all songs that already have loaded in here. If you've done any songs, you just click the add new and select MP3 files from your computer. We are thinking about doing a future webinar on how to edit slash create audio files and specifically make sure they work with Cobra. Um, so just wanna keep that in mind. We're not gonna talk a lot about that in this webinar. So we are using this top file here uh, for today's example. Once this loads in here, you'll see that you can clearly tell the highs and lows of the waveform. And you can zoom in here to get a better look at a very specific subset of the waveform. You can also change the height of the waveform. So if you want to see those more defined, you can increase or decrease that waveform, right? Okay, so just looking at this, I can see peaks within the waveform that I probably wanna put events, okay? So let's just go ahead and play the soundtrack and then we'll just see if we wanna add some events to it. This is like the, the beginning of the soundtrack. We don't really care too much about that. We're gonna start right in this general region. The full song. Carol Pass. Okay, so in this case, when she when he says Carol Baskin, <laughs> let's just say we want to put at Carol and Baskin, we want to put an event. Okay, so I'm just clicking on the specific highs on the waveform and clicking add timed event. And you'll see it added two different cues. Now let's say both of those cues I'm off by just a little bit. Like let's let's say a tenth of a second. You can click both of these cues. And what I'm doing is I'm clicking the first cue, holding shift on my keyboard, clicking the second cue. I'm gonna right click, and there's an option to shift cues. And you can do this with tons of cues if you want to. <laughs> you guys can. So then let's say I wanna adjust this by 10th of a second backwards. So we'll put in a negative 0.1. And we'll see both of these have now shifted backwards in time by 10th of a second. And then also, of course, you can save it. Now that was obviously just a joke with the soundtrack. We purposely did that so you guys would have to drink if you are playing the drinking game with us. I'm gonna open another show that has a little bit different audio file so you can kind of see how it might look. So this is one I was just kind of playing around with. And you'll see my gain on this file is crazy. So if I turn it down a bit. Question, Joel, when you yes, double sir. click on an, on an event, does it automatically shift the cursor to, the, to that event within the waveform? Yes, so let's go down here towards the end. 59 seconds for this last event, which you see is off my screen. So I click on that, you'll see it bounce me over and center that event on a timeline here. Right, and I could go back and do that again, going back the other way. There are a couple of things here um, with waveforms that I didn't really mention. You'll see that as I click forward, my waveform is black on one side and gray on the other side. That is how I have it set up. So from your preferences and here with your waveform, all the way at the top, there's color selectors. So you can change all these different colors. So if you're colorblind and you, you do not like red, you do not like greens, you can go through there and change those however you want. Same with you know the progress bar on the waveform. You'll see I have it set as black. You can easily make that whatever kind of um, neon color, whatever is easy on your eyes. Uh, thank you, Zach. I do have a few polls that I did not run. I'm gonna backtrack here and run one from the before. So if you guys don't mind answering the following question. 
just for our reference after the webinar. Do you want to show Joel the uh, the uh, the different other waveform options like speed up, Absolutely. slow down, and then also enabling and disabling the scrolling yeah. auto scroll? Yeah. Sure. Um, so while I'm still in preferences, let me hit these real quick. You'll see there's a waveform cursor option. I have this checked on and that basically says instead of seeing my cursor, I'm seeing this red line. And we kind of added that as a way to see where you're hovering over while you're creating your show. There is also a auto scroll waveform option. So if I enable this, it'll actually keep my waveform centered, my, my playhead centered. If you disable that, it'll allow it. So if you're working on a very specific point in time in your script, the playhead will go off your screen instead of keeping you aligned in the middle. Um, so actually, if I enable that real quick, I'll just show you. It will take a second to reload my waveform. And as it's loading after this, Joel, if you don't mind some questions on pre-fire and lift time. So I think Absolutely, you're yeah. Yeah, this is um, the bulk of the, of the uh, seminar. So if I click, this is a kind of a short soundtrack. So let me just kind of click right here. Do you see how, see how it's moving my playa to the center and it's kind of keeping it in the middle? That is because with my preference, I turned off that auto scroll waveform. I only turned it on. Um, so if I disable that now, my playhead will just run without me following it. There's also an option to change the layout. So we have a top and left option for all of your times. On the previous show creator, all of your options were kind of like on the left. And so now it's all on the top or on the left, whatever you, whatever you see fit. Joel, I see we have someone asking about the uh, the poll results. If you want to share those, my apologies. Here's the results if anyone's cared to see it. I do have several other fun polls coming up too. Uh, one of the panels room would remind me here in a few minutes. Um, so, as Scott mentioned, there's also a pre-fire and lift time sections. If you do not want to use pre-fire and lift times, there are ability to change change them or turn them off. So what is a pre-fire and lift time? So in this case, you'll see like right here, I have a second and a half as a lift time. So on my waveform here, let me zoom in a little bit. You'll see that there's a very thin horizontal line right here in the middle. That is my lift time. And then the thick horizontal line is my duration. And so anytime you have a lift time or pre-fire time, what it's doing is it's taking the time that you want to fire in the script and subtracting the lift time or the pre-fire time. So in this case, like a second and a half for my lift time. So why would you want to do that? So with pre-fire times, it's commonly used when you're using a consumer igniters because there's a little bit of time it takes for them to uh, light the firework. So you might have like a half second standard pre-fire just to account for that delay. Now with lift times, those are primarily used when you want something to be timed to go off in the sky. Obviously that can be difficult, but let's say it's like three inch shell, you'd use like a three inch lift time so on Cobra's side, the firework would fire. Three seconds later, you'd see it break in the sky. So on your waveform here, you would see where it was supposed to break, and then you'd see the little tail to where it's actually gonna fire in your script. So then when you export the show, that lift time and that pre-fire time will be accounted in your script time. If that makes sense? Um, I can also show a better example of that in a previous show I did, where I specifically wanted a, a firework to go in the sky, and I put a, uh, a lift time on there. And like I said, if you don't want to use those, you can turn them off or have it preset to a certain time. So like in this case, you'll see, I don't even have my pre-fire time because I'm not using consumer igniters, but I have lift time because in certain cases I might want to use them, right? Cover everything. Can you, bulk, can you bulk edit the pre-fire time as the, as the whole column? I don't think you can do that, but you can set a default setting, right, Joel? Right, right. So if I add pre-fire time, there's a drop down to set it as a specific um, pre fire. Time. Right. Um, one thing to note on that that's coming soon next, uh, should be next week, is that we will have the ability, uh, drink, thank you, Joel. Uh, we will have the ability for you to export a show file out of Cobra Show Creator that contains all of the columns, including your pre fire, lift time, any custom columns, and make edits to those in Excel, and then re import that file. Uh, against the current file to perform 
an update, I think, or it may create a new one. What we'll a clarification on that? But yeah, right. But anyway, you, the point is, is that if there's something you want to do in Excel, you could do in Excel. And I think you also, if you want to show show Joel quickly, you can if you do like a cut and paste, or not a cut and paste, but copy paste. Like if you click on a a cell and you and you do Control C and then you do Control V on another cell, it will paste it just like Excel. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, so to rewind a little bit, so why would we do the whole allow you to, basically it's um, ability to, the two things we're doing, ability to make two different instances of a show. So if you want to change how it does, but still have the original copy, um, duplicate, right? And then the save as is one thing that kind of like what Scott mentioned. So if you want to have like a hard copy on your computer, so that way you have the hard copy, but you can still load that back in the show creator, which it currently has a little bit of issues with. Um, so then... Sorry, what did you mention, Scott? Yeah, I was just, uh, in fact, I was going to try this in my own, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can like, you can actually yes, copy yes. and paste. Right. So if you're within the waveform here, you can use, for example, arrow keys to move up and down on the columns. Um, or if I wanted to, excuse me, let's say copy this red strobe here. So control C would copy, move down to the next column, control V, it's going to paste it. Right, so you see how it pasted the red stroke down to the next column. So it's a lot easier to kind of navigate much like you would in Excel. And if I, you know, I accidentally did that in this case, I'm gonna control Z, which is undo. Okay. Uh, the question, just to reconfirm someone, if you have the lift time added to the event, does that mean that the firework will fire that time earlier than when your event is set out or just for the visual? No, it's not for the visual. Uh, it, it literally, when you export the script, it will subtract off the lift time and the pre-fire time so that when your Cobra module is firing, it's firing a little bit earlier such that the, in the case of a lift time, the burst occurs or a pre-fire time, um, it shoots a little bit sooner. So that time right. is in fact subtracted off the, the event time um, at the time of export, even though your event time displays the, what you would consider the burst time within the software. Right. So like I just did that just uh, outside of all the other cues, so it's easier to see. So in this case, we want the firework to fire at approximately one minute, 43 seconds. You'll see I put in a two second lift time here. So the tail here indicates when it's actually going to fire, which would be a minute, 41 seconds. Yeah. All righty. So. Um, you want to do custom columns there. since you're on the since you're on the topic of those columns or, or do what you want. I'll yeah. No, uh, you're <laughs> fine. I think okay. I mentioned already that the, the custom columns you can preset. I think I mentioned that from your show settings. Very bottom oh, here. Sorry. sorry. I'm clicking around a little bit. Custom columns. Right. So if you want to change what yeah. you've already added, you can change that, add more and then preferences right. account. You can have presets. For example, I have a position one. And, and the other thing with custom columns, I know you're probably going to mention this too, Joel, is that by having custom columns, you can also put in things other than just like position angle. If you just want like a general notes column, you can put that in there. If you want something else that deals with color. So if you have a generic uh, shell and you want to type in the color within that, you can do that. And one of the things Joel's going to... Continue on, <laughs> one, Scott, of the thing, one of the things that Joel's going to show, which he'll me for talking about it earlier is that those same custom columns also appear within uh, labels reports and different things so custom columns even though it's a very simple feature it's actually quite powerful in in uh in the rest of the software for taking the same information and applying it elsewhere absolutely so let's just say this show is done right and we're ready to uh, <laughs> see some reports so in this case there's a report option here on my left navigation and when I click on that, it's gonna expand our four report options. So first off, we have our Q report. And from the Q report, it's gonna show all of our information, I'm sorry, Q labels. It's gonna show all of our information that you might wanna put onto a label to stick onto the firework and or put onto the e-match when you're plugging into Cobra. So all of this is completely customizable. So as Scott mentioned with different columns, you can change those options from here. So if you wanted to have notes or you want to have angles, positions, you can select all of that. We also have a lot of other options if you like color. So a very specific field pops, you can make it so it shows red. We also have a custom text ability and there are some things we will be adding in the future. And we, with, with reports in general, it's one of the things we've actually spent a lot of time on more recently 
adding more ability to customize it and we're definitely adding more coming soon um, as well. So for example, on line three here, phone number, uh, if I want to type in like the show date, it could put it onto my queue label, but in the future we'll make it so that will be a standard option. So you can say this show is going to fire on, you know, for example, July 4th or whatever that is. So that way, if you are pulling inventory um, from containers, you know that it's for a specific show date. So this label, these labels here, you can print using the following Avery labels up here in the top right corner. You just click the print icon. You can also save any of these reports as PDF files. So it's not like you have to print them. You can absolutely save any of them. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next report. And that is the module report. So when I click module report here, it's going to show me all of the modules I'm planning to use broken out by channel. So in this case, this is a very short script. I can load a larger one to see what, to show you what that would look like. Excuse me. But let's hypothetically say this is what we're going to do. It's not going to print channel one, two, and three on the same page. When I go to print, it's going to print each channel on their own page. So it's not like you're, you know, kind of like fighting through channels trying to figure out where you're at. So it is going to separate that out by page, but it has everything that is going to be firing on that specific channel. Now, someone did mention something earlier about firing multiple fireworks from the same queue. So I just saw an example. So I wanted to kind of hit that real quick. You'll see here that this is not a realistic situation because of the timing, but it is showing as channel one, Q3 firing at the same time. So if you wanted to have, for example, in this case, two mines firing together, but for example, like in a V pattern, you could plug those in as firing on the same queue and just have a separate line in your vent list here. And that's gonna add another queue label for you. So that way each effect, even though it's on the same queue, would have its own label, right? So then uh, the next report is the queue report. And the queue report is basically just a list of your, it's, it's pretty much the, your show, sequentially organized by time, channel queue, and it has all the extra information that your traditional Cobra CSV file does not include. So for example, the duration, the pre-fire time, the lift time, position angle, all that extra information. And the last report is my product list. Actually for this list, for this report, I wanna open another show that has a little bit better information. That real quick. I realize the poll is still running. Okay, so with this show, I've actually inserted um, cost for all my fireworks using the show, so that way I can show you what this looks like. Close out all these tabs here. Okay, so here's all of the fireworks used in the show. So I can select, for example, brand of firework, the part numbers, if it's used for shopping or picking and pulling, um, cost. So if I select the cost field here, you'll see an average cost for this firework. In this case, that is showing 449 US dollars for each individual item. There's also a total cost field. So for example, 449 times five equals or should equal 2245, right? And then if I scroll it down to the bottom here, estimated show cost for the entire show. Right, so this way you can have costs associated with everything you do. Someone had talked a little bit earlier about um, cost estimates for shows or overestimating. It doesn't allow you to put in like, I'm gonna do a thousand dollar show, but it will give you an outlook here of what you're actually at when you build your show or when you're, when you're done with your show. Um, like I said though, you can really select any of these categories and it'll add them all to the list and adds it fairly quickly. You can download this if it is used, for example, for picking or pulling inventory as well as printing as always. All right, so that pretty much covers the reports. I do see a few questions, I think, with risk reports, so maybe we'll hit those real quick before we move on. Um, I've been answering a lot of these just kind of as they've been going, okay. Joel. Okay, well, if there's anything um, we need to talk about reports-wise, um, um, no. Yeah, no, nothing specifically. Um, I do the basics, see. Well, someone did say the basic sketch of the positions layout would be nice. Um, field map functionality, layout positions, um, use of positions to automatically assign uh, cues to the channels is something that is on our roadmaps, John. So it's just kind of coming so, soon. So, what? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Coming soon. That's coming soon on that one. Coming soon. Um, 
igniters and mat okay so good feedback have reports account for ematch not sure if i fully understand that question reports account for ematch someone asked previously why my oh cost of ematch right so right that's too, that's so it's good both david and andy um right great question um may make sense just to incorporate that into the cost of your product but i totally understand how a feature like that would make sense for sure Okay, so someone had asked in the, the previous session, and I thought I saw it, but maybe not, why is, why, why is some of these cues are showing as yellow? And so if you hover over any of these cues, if they're showing red, yellow, or whatever, it's because there's a warning or an error. Red means warning, yellow means error. So in this case, you'll see it says, this cue is on this channel already used, right? And that's because, like I mentioned before, I'm having two fireworks fire at the exact same time, but I wanted a cue label for each individual firework, Therefore, I've created a whole separate line. And I think I mentioned this before too, if I select an entire line, I can right click it and use the duplicate option. And so that way, if I already have the time and you know duration, all whatever that is configured, I can duplicate and potentially change some small detail and still keep all the other information. Someone asked uh, this, uh, Grant said, I don't see an option to remove the red text from the queue number on labels. Can that be added if you're using a black only printer it will be faded so anyway okay uh, good feedback yeah the queue um, number is defaulted to red so yeah that's it yeah okay thanks Grant. okay so there's a few other features i want to hit before we go to exporting and those are pretty much the help and any other preference show show settings we have not covered um, so let me just look at the preferences real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything. So one thing that we did add in this version is you can see your license key and also the expiration date of your license key from your account that was not available in the previous version of show creator. I'm not going to click show obviously, but it does also send you an automated email 30 days prior to the expiration of your license. Just kind of fun though to have. Um, from the waveform, I think we talked about all of this stuff. If um, you want to, for example, have it ask you if you want to delete a queue, you can turn that on. I don't have that on just because if I'm deleting a queue, I normally think I do it on purpose. <laughs> and then Wiki Fireworks, just so you can link your account from Wiki Fireworks. So then the next tab here is our help tab. So if I click on that, there, there is a few things. So if you have already been show creator, hopefully you saw our tutorial. And if you clicked out of that or want to see it again, you can access that by going to help and then clicking on the view tutorials tab. There's also two other features here that are very useful. If you are seeing an existing bug, something's not working correctly, you can click on report an issue and it will send an email directly to our team. There's also a feedback button. So if you want to see a future improvement, um, or something that could be coming soon, you can click on that and send that to us. Also, whenever we make any sort of update, we do have patch notes that appear. So whenever you come to Show Creator, if there is a new update that should appear on your screen, and if you wanna see previous patch notes, you just click on the change log slash patch notes. Keyboard shortcuts accesses the same keyboard shortcuts that's right here. A couple quick, can I just throw out some questions? Just Absolutely. As uh, what format does the cost report download as, or what formats are available? Like, like just in general, like can you download reports to Excel? Can you download them to PDF? I'll actually just show you real quick. So I'm gonna click download here. It does default download to CSV. However, if I click print, it does allow me to download a save as PDF. Also save to your drive, it looks like. So if you wanted to save that to something different. Gotcha. Um, when you were talking about the color alerts below before Joel, like the yellows and the reds, if, if there is a yellow in there and you decide to like fix it or whatever, or will that go away or is there any way to override that so it doesn't continue to show yellow? And then as a follow-up question, if you have a red air, will that prevent your show from firing or is it more informational? So yellow is purely a warning. So no matter what, the show will fire. To my knowledge, you can't turn that off. So I have to double confirm that. Red is a problem that you have to fix. So like, um, like if you try to put in a channel that doesn't exist, meaning like currently in Cobra 5.0 or earlier, channel 101 just simply does not exist. So if I put 101 there, it's gonna say, hey, that's invalid, you have to fix it, right? 
So red, what red will require you to fix. Um, can you show real quickly, and I know you may have, or can you show how to assign multiple, how to assign a firework to multiple queues by using this? Can you just maybe re-explain the shift in the control feature uh, on how you can highlight multiple rows and, and assign a firework? Yeah, so I, let me open up one of the previous shows, just kind of like a, as an example here. And let's say, for example, at the end of this waveform, you want to add two things to fire at the same time, correct? Yeah, yeah, if you just okay. highlight the hand. Yeah, uh, okay, well, yeah, okay, so let's just go to the last queue in the script, so this red cross set. So let's say you want to have two of those fire at the exact same time, in this case, a minute 43. If I click on that queue, I can right click and click duplicate. And you'll see that it added another line. And let's say, I don't know what channel this is, maybe channel five. And you want this also to fire at channel five Q7. It does auto increment. And then you just go and you can change it to seven. Or now that I've created it, you can duplicate that queue as well. And you'll see it already assigned at five, seven. So there's several different ways you can kind of achieve that. Or if we talked about a little bit before, if you just want to copy the description, you can use control C, which is copy. Okay, go down to your next line, control V, let's paste, and we'll just paste in information from the previous right. line. But can you, can you also show how to highlight like multiple rows using the control and shift and then, oh, and then click that add, add button from the, uh, from the My Fireworks section? Oh, to insert fireworks. Yeah, yeah, insert, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, so just like use the control key to choose yep. a bunch of fireworks. Yeah, so let's say we want to do all these last three items, right? So have line 61 selected. I'm going to hold shift, click on 63. Highlights all three of those events. Now this button here, it says insert into fire grow. We just got to find whatever fire we want to add. For example, orange cross set. Click on that and you'll see all three of these have now changed to orange cross set. Cool. Um, one other question on the wiki. Uh, I think Grant, I'm not sure if this is the answer, but if there's any problems with the data on the wiki, and I had this question just a couple other times earlier, is that when you bring that firework from the wiki into Cobra Show Creator, uh, if there's any bad information, wrong information, something that you want to change, you can edit all of that within your firework in Cobra Show Creator, and that will save just for you only. Okay, so it's not going to change anything on the wiki. Um, but it's, it will change it for you personally. So it's kind of think of the wiki as the starting point for information that may be helpful, and then you can make those changes on your own within your own personal database. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question, Adam, but that's funny. <laughs> right, go ahead, Joel. Well, at this point, we've kind of hit the end where I'm going to do exporting, show you how to export script audio file and also load that onto the ATR2. And then it kind of transitions into any sort of Q&A or just anything else anyone wants to see. So the pretty much at this point in time, let's say my show's done, right? I've already printed all my reports. Now I want to export, load that show onto my remote. So there is an export option here on my left navigation. When I click on that, it's going to bring up a pop-up that says, hey, you want to export your script or your audio file? So if I click on download Cobra CSV, You'll see it automatically goes into my download here. Now, when it's right here, if you right click it, there's a show and folder option. Okay, so I click on that. There, <laughs> there it is with my uh, Carol Baskin audio file and a few other things <laughs> in my downloads. So I'm gonna move this to my external USB drive. So, let's we'll see, I have a USB drive as my E drive down here. So if I just click this, I'm gonna actually just click and drag it for you guys. And you'll see the script is now on my USB drive. Now, if you do multiple scripts currently, it will change Cobra to add a parentheses in whatever number script that is. But you have to make sure it's renamed to just cobra.csv. And you can do that by clicking, right clicking on it and going to rename. Um, in the future, we are changing that. So future firmware versions, we will allow different script names. So if you want to have it called, for example, 4th of July, it will allow you to load it onto the 18R2. But currently on 5.0 and older, you have to have it called cover.csv. So at this point in time, I see my script on my USB drive. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my USB drive from my computer. I do have um, an 18R2 next to me. 
if no one can see that from the screen. It is off. We're going to plug in my USB drive. We're going to turn on my remote. And once the remote finishes booting up, you'll see these LEDs kind of circle. And that's loading my script like that. And you'll see 01 displayed. That means I now have one script loaded onto my remote. And if I go to, for example, channel one, you'll see I have four red events. And that is the four cues that I have assigned to channel one in my show, for example, at zero seconds and so forth. And so at this point, in order to, I don't know if I mentioned this, so let's talk about that real quick. So how do I start my script on my remote? So in Show Creator and other programs such as Finale Fireworks, it defaults to channel zero, Q1, meaning you have to go to channel zero on your remote, push Q1, and it fires your script. So the Show Settings option here shows you this information, as well as several of our other advanced scripting features. Personally, I would just leave it, but you can change that if you want to. And the other option to mention on the export is the export audio option. So since you upload files, audio files to Show Creator actually saves it on our server. So if you do need to access that somewhere else and you don't have your audio file, you can download it again if you need to. Um, one question on the audio file they're asking, is there any, uh, why do we have a download audio file feature when you should probably have that? That file already now why do we even offer that button well uh, I, mean, I guess one example would be is if you forgot your computer and your USB drive at home but your friend has a computer you can log into your show creator and download the audio file <laughs> just uh, kind of a reassurance uh, that, that you could access it yeah. else. there's nothing we're doing to it technically it's more just a convenience feature that we added yeah. into the yeah. short answer I'm sure a lot of people might not use it, but it's there just in case you do need it. Um, other questions. Uh, so it is PC and Mac based. Uh, question of whether it works with the control panel. Uh, the control panel is a different product that's meant more for day to day show or day day of show diagnostics and execution. We'll definitely be cut. We'll cover that. I'm sure within another webinar. Um, I'm just trying to look at these to see if there's anything else, Joel, that's good for. Uh, can you collapse, hide, specifically show entire channels? Uh, not currently, right, Joel? Right way to kind of hide that. Uh, right, so there are 18R2 and thumb drives. Uh, uh, USB 2.0 is the thumb drive that we recommend. Um, we also have Cobra certified thumb drives that work with the audio box and the HNR2 that we sell on our website. Um, so right now, unfortunately, kind of 2.0 thumb drives uh, are what the HNR2 works with. Um, show creator is written in PHP, JavaScript, and I'm sure some other language I don't believe is written in Python. Sorry, I'm <laughs> just answering some of these, Joel. Uh, I, I, I do see Bo's questions in the comments about filters. Yeah, go ahead if you want to look at that. Any plans to make the HNR2 plug into the computer via USB OTG and direct download rather than buying the USB? Uh, probably not in the short term, honest, honestly, just due to development time and, and that it's not too bad to have to save it to your USB thumb drive. Um, that, that may change within the future, but there's nothing um, that short term with us supporting uh, a direct connection. Um, obviously, the, the control panel serves a very different need than being connected to your uh, HNR2 during a show, which is obviously a, a lot more valuable, typically, when you see PC software connected to a controller and, and the goal of having that. Uh, the show share feature, right, I think we should, we, is there any way to share your script with another licensed um, cover show creator user? We did have that within the old one. We did make some changes to not fully support that within the new one that may certainly come back so that's great feedback if anyone else is interested in that certainly let us know we're definitely uh do, do we want to touch on alternate cues joel or do you want to save that for more sure. advanced stuff yeah uh well right so i have a few of the scripting features that i consider advanced but we have plenty of time and we're, we're kind of hanging out anyway. So I'll just go ahead and hit those if, if, if everyone is interested. Um, so the alternate event that 
is being referred to. In my show settings here, you'll see I have several other options. Dead man, disable firing, alternate one, alternate two. Um, that's not really two. Anyway, so what these options are, so let's talk about dead man first and then we'll kind of move into your alternates, right? So with dead man, there is an option to use a Cobra dead man, dead man trigger. I don't have one. I do have one available, one second. Um, while you guys, are, well, just to answer these, uh, we will be supporting dragging and dropping on the waveform, so that's coming soon. Uh, you know, definitely more advanced waveform features. You don't have to edit the events directly. I'm just looking at these, Joel, and trying to knock. Is that you're fine. doing that? Um, yeah. uh, filtering sorting options available within the UI. Within my fireworks bow, you can do a lot of filtering and sortering. Um, I don't believe within the actual event, uh, you, the event you can't, list. Sorry to interrupt. You can't currently sort or filter the my fireworks. You can search, though. Uh, you searching sort and filter. right so if you type in for example 500 gram cake or three inch shell or whatever that is it will pop up all results that match that but there's it's not a filter um, but we do have some plans to, to really improve on all of that yeah yeah and that's one of the great things about this new software is that now that we have our own platform we have our own uh you know more of our own development team in the sense that we're, we're going to continue to improve this so this is you know the fact is the last two years even though it's similar although better in many ways to the existing show creator that same progress that you'll see in the coming years going forward isn't going to go to rebuilding our existing show creator but rather rather adding new features on top of what we what we have created absolutely um, here. <clears throat> yeah so um real quick so talking about this is more advanced features we do have an option called the cobra deadman control this is what that would look like it's a dead man trigger which is this part and then two buttons on top. So the dead man trigger is what you could specify within the dead man button here on my screen. So if I type in dead man, what that means is my script is gonna expect me to hold this trigger during my show, right? So put dead man in there, and then if I push, uh, in this case, channel zero Q1 to start my script, it's gonna show pause on my, my remote. And why it's showing pause is because it expects me to hold this trigger. So then as soon as I hold that trigger, my show will start, and if I ever let go, my show will pause. And then also the buttons on top, there's two buttons on top here. One is actually used for alternate events, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and the other one emulates the step button on your 18 or two, right? So with alternate events, alternate events, basically what they're used for is a no black sky, or just, you know, you wanna have some fun firing some cues. So within my script here, let's go down to the last couple of cues in my script. Let's say these three cues. So instead of having them fire at a time, if I click on the time column, I can say, I wanna make this an alternate one event. And then I click change here, and you'll see now it's showing as alternate. And so what that means is whenever I fire an alternate cue, which can be done with the button on the trigger or alternate firing here, for example, Q17, you can change this to whatever you want. Each time I push Q17 on my remote, it's gonna fire another alternate cue. And you can specify several of those. So if a cake ends early, something you know is not in the sky that should be, aka black sky, you can push Q17, it's gonna fire the next sequential um, alternate event. So basically to kind of fill that sky. And the cool thing about alternate events, we have two different alternate options. So if you want to have shells on one alternate queue, cakes on another, you could absolutely do that. Um, you could also program the alternate events to fire in your, in your show. So, for example, if you have a bunch of three-inch shells that are part of your finale, you can pre-program that so they're going to fire no matter what. But early on in the show, you know, you want to fill some black sky, you just fire a three-inch shell. And if you don't fire, no worries, they'll fire in the finale. Or if you just simply want that, that fun of firing something, you could use that as well. Um, there's also a disable firing feature I kind of skipped over real quick. How many alternate cues? How many alternate cues are we up to? It was previously 18. I think that was 4.0. Did we make it unlimited? What? What? Another thing I just commented on Jonah's beard and I saw him. Smile. So I thought that was fun. Someone asked how many alternate keys we have, and I, I honestly can't okay. remember if it's still capped at 18 or if it's unlimited in 5.0. Scott, do you remember? You might have to I just, I, can you re-ask the question? I'm sorry. I guess you're doing it. So how many alternate yeah. events do we support? In 4.0, it was limited to one alternate at 18 queues. 
and five Oh, I feel like we expanded on that. I just don't know if there's a hard cap. Yeah, I don't, I, I, would have to double check that. So whoever <laughs> asked that question, if you want to email us at, at help at but I, I do, I do not I, believe that we actually increased the total number of alternate events that we support. So meaning it's at least 18 per alternate event. It's, it's at least 18 per, per alternate event. And I think we tied per that per to alternate. the number one through 18. So you can, so, so it's basically tied to the controller. So if you want to have 18 three inch shells and then 18 cakes, you could absolutely do that. Yes, yeah, so a total of 36 alternate events across both buttons. Okay. Um, so the other, the other feature on here is disable firing. So what this means is if you want to test audio with your remote, but we don't want any modules to fire, you can specify disable firing button. And when you toggle that, the remote will show no fire on the seven second display and no cues on your modules will fire, only the audio track. And um, there are a ton of other advanced scripting features that should be coming out soon, such as time code, um, time code. What else is there? <laughs> There's another one I'm thinking. For scripting stuff? Did you, did you mention time code? Yeah, pretty much time, time code. code. Uh, Drunk line. Show creator is currently limited to Cobra equipment. Yes. Yeah, that I, that was asked a couple times. So, unfor yeah, unfortunately today, well, yeah, I'm not sure. I can't long. show you a demo of the offline mode because then my screen will stop sharing and you guys will lose me. <laughs> if that was the joke, touche. <laughs> uh, there's no channel designation for alternate firing. Right. Correct. It's not right. tied to a channel. It's right. just a button. So in this case, in my script here on my screen, I already have an alternate for channel five. If I want to change uh, channel 12, Q9, I just have to click on the time here, change that. And you'll see now channel 12, Q9 and channel five, Q7. So it's pretty much, you can use just extra cues you have if you want to. Um, and then if you want to make an alternate two, you just have to select the little bubble for alternate two and change that. And you'll see now I have two alternate one and alternate twos. <clears throat> Um, obviously a lot of interest in time code, uh, time code's part of our SIMPTY time code will be part of our 5.1.1 release, um, FSK, um, absolutely. There's no question that we want to support FSK that is also in, in, in the, uh, works and, and well under discussion, but SIMPTY is, um, is in beta right now. Um, probably be used, being used by at least a hundred people and we'll be out very soon with our five point run release, which is just around the corner. You can turn your browser to offline. I guess I'm not familiar with that. How to do that. So pretty much if you do have offline, if you don't have internet, um, you won't be able to access the My Fireworks section, right? However, you should still be able to open any scripts, make changes and export. Yeah. Um, yes, Glenn, when, when the show is firing, the cues do Oh, uh, so blink. that's a... That's a good point. So let's go ahead and show that real quick. So if I'm starting here at the beginning, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can kind of get a better little view here. So you see the orange cue is the cue that just fired, yellow previously fired. So as it's going through, it's firing all my cues. Yeah. Why don't you show the slowdown feature too, the, the time playback? Oh, back. yes. Thank you. So that is another thing we do have over here, right next to the audio volume control. There is the ability to change the playback rate. So if you want to slow down or speed up, you can do so. For example, half the regular speed is selected currently. So now when I push play, you'll see it's much more slowed down. And this is obviously useful if you're trying to get a very specific, you know, sequence going so if i just zoom in here realistic scenario if you're trying to get these beats very precise you can change the speed you can also speed it up if you really want to get want to get crazy yeah <laughs> it's fun but the the slowdown is it's quite cool because if you're trying to really precisely time events to a certain <laughs> uh, if you're drinking, go to our website, spend some money. 
and support us. Just kidding. Um, uh, but the playback feature is quite cool because you can slow it down and it really helps you kind of precisely nail it to that, that section of the song that you're working on. Uh, right, so a lot of questions here on SMPTE and DMX. We're definitely going to cover that. There's, there's no question that as we start coming out with news and new releases, we're likely just going to do webinars on each of those to answer specific questions on those. Yeah, so there was a lot of requests for in-depth scripting, so more of power musical design. We kind of covered some of the band scripting features, but definitely with timecode and any future developments, um, there's a lot we could talk about. Yeah. These are just one, some one, examples I came up with. One, These percentages are wonky. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's like 8,000%. Um, well, this might be a multiple choice one. Right. The, there is a question, Joel, that came up here, and I know this came up in our webinar earlier today, so many people may be asking, is they're talking about multiple scripts and being able to either combine scripts together or support multiple scripts within the same file? So right now, Cobra Show, to, Show Creator does not support... Oh, God. I didn't see this earlier today. <laughs> if you choose option number two, email me and I'll give you a discount. Ooh, Zach oh. was taking the lead for a second. Scott's coming in hot. He is the Am boss, I? so I feel like you guys are choosing him only because he's the boss. Remember who's doing most of the talking tonight? All also, the is also Carter's going to buy you a beer at the next trade show. <laughs> I won't give you anyway. a discount, but I'll give you the best support. That's true. Yeah. Maybe anyway, uh, continue. Anywho, um, yeah, so the today Cobra Show Creator does not support um, ah, multiple okay. scripts within the same file. Um, however, uh, within our future release, specifically 6.0, we actually deal with that a little bit differently and make it a lot more friendly to multiple scripts within a file and its ability to support unlimited shoes and unlimited channels across multiple scripts within a file. And that may or may not may that may make sense to some people and not to others who don't understand that. But uh, in the future versions, we'll support that uh, support the concept of multiple scripts within the controller better, not only within scripting design but also within the firmware uh, for supporting unlimited channels and queues, and also within the control panel for selecting and executing, and within Cobra Show Creator for designing. So at all, each of the silos. Oh, I won. Did I win? That's not fair. I mean, obviously, you are the boss. Yeah, but did I, didn't you win earlier today? No. I, I tried it. twice and I failed. So. Oh. It shouldn't even be an option. Second place. So. I'll take my seven. Thank you, guys. No, all the above one. Oh, ooh, I it was. That. It was multiple choice too. So if you only selected Scott, yeah, shame. Anyway, yeah. did you want me to show something with multiple scripts, or was that just? Uh, um, I'm not sure if we necessarily need to. Okay. Um, I'm just looking through these FAQs. Yep. Uh, yeah. So people are asking if you can watch this later. Absolutely, we are recording this. Hopefully. And we will be posting it. I'm toasting this to YouTube, and uh, you know, obviously, and I'm not trying to close this up or anything because we can obviously sit here for as long as people want. But any questions that you have afterwards, obviously, reach out to us. We go way beyond just this as a webinar. Obviously, we're all individuals. You can email us individually. You can also email help at cobrafiringsystems.com. Use the uh, the phone number on our website if you want to talk to Zach, or Zach can obviously connect you to anyone else if needed. But Zach's also a master uh, master knowledge center of um, most, if not all, information, and uh, and uh, yeah. So Zach deserves a pay raise. That's true. That's <laughs> true. I didn't put that in a poll, but let me add that real yeah, quick. Yeah, Does yeah. Zach deserve a pay raise? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, uh, there is a few other Q and A. Do we, we need to hit some? Yeah, do we want? Is there a way to view the sliders? We just talked about that. Uh, is there an API to get MS Visio for drawings? Wow, sorry, Jason, that's probably not gonna happen. I wish I could say it would be, but that's I, that's definitely the first time that's ever been requested. Uh, please include the Q and A in the chat and the video posting if possible. We'll do our best. Well, Joel can make a note to see if we can somehow possibly get that out. I don't know if you can actually export. I don't that. think I can export Q and A. I can export chat. I know that. Yeah, export chat. Um, is there a back button to get to the beginning of the script, or is that still in place? I'm not sure, Joel. Was there ever a back button to get to the beginning of the script? 
or do you just page up, page down? Back buttons. There is a option here on these buttons, beginning of song, end of song. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Um, you can also scroll pretty fast on this, this bar here or simply clicking on any event is gonna jump you to whatever event you're clicking on. So if I just click here, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep. Okay. Uh, Chris, when you, load, when you do load a new script file onto the 18R2, it will in fact erase all scripts on the 18R2 and replace it with whatever scripts you've loaded, um, regardless if there's one script or multiple scripts on it. Uh, any plans to fire a show directly from Cobra Show Creator to the 18R2? Uh, similar to what the control panel displays? Probably not. Uh, I think that's really the purpose of the control panel is that show control section. So we're probably not gonna develop that feature in both systems, um, but rather make improvements to the control panel to uh, uh, make that better. Uh, the next subject of the webinar is up in the air, right? We're gonna probably announce that within the next day or two, I would assume, All right, guys? Uh, any plans to fire a show directly from Cover Show? All right, I just answered that. Uh, still have one year. Oh, this is a great one. Joel, do you want to answer this? Still have a year, or, or Zach, still have one year on the current PC license. How, do, how does that work with the no show, no show, with the, with the, it <laughs> new does, show creator versus the old? It does transfer over. You can use your existing license to activate the new license. If you have any problems with that, reach out to Zach. He'll help you. Yeah, uh, just uh, to note, it uh, some of the older codes have a seven character ending section where the, the Cobra Show Creator web version says it needs to be a uh, portion. Just uh, that has been changed. So if you enter that in, it will still allow you to go through it. Um, are you, I assume you're familiar with Alexander Maydorf's Pyro Attack. Will there be any reason to upgrade from his already free and fantastic software? So, uh, Sorry for an unwelcome question. No, it's not. We we love and encourage third-party applications um, that in some ways compete. We see other people creating hardware that works with Cobra. Um, we're, we're certainly, there's different mindsets of organizations. We're one of, you know, if it helps the community, that's great. If it helps use a customer, that's great. If it doesn't come from us, that's okay. You know, in some cases we'll create stuff and if, and if others need to fill the gap, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, obviously we think that perhaps our Cobra Show Creator is going to develop at a faster rate and that our features um, are comparable, if not better in some areas and worse than others. I'm not quite sure. I'm not too familiar with it. But, you know, obviously software like Finale, Show Sim, FW Sim, um, you know, even show, Visual Show Director, there's a lot of other software packages out there that, that today work with Cobra. That's great. If you're familiar, comfortable, and want to use that software, awesome. We're happy to support it as well. If there's any questions, we're not at all... Uh, know controlling over our own well if, if it helps you we want to we want to be part of the solution even if it's not our system how do you play, clear a script off the 18r2 it's a sync and channel up oh, I'm sorry sync and test for 10 seconds right 15. we'll see if anyone else wants to grab these feel free I don't want to feel like I'm stealing anything oh CobraCon yeah two questions on CobraCon um, yeah, I mean, right now it's still planned. Obviously the world is in a state of confusion where not confusion, that's the wrong term. It's in a state of uncertainty, uh, uh probably confusion as well. Um, and so, uh, stay tuned for that. We're, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we're, um, we're going to provide any updates if updates are made, but right now currently all plans are in place to maintain that event. If that's changed, obviously we're going to let you guys know, but right now the plans are still in place for that. Uh, can you get a swag pack that includes long sleeve t-shirt and hoodie in it? Uh, you can buy the stuff on the website. I don't think we actually have a pack that's built, but you can certainly buy them individually. Hopefully they're priced right. Oh. Um, we could probably pack it in a single box. Sure we could. Or if you want to, you know, <laughs> we can pack it in a single box. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, CobraCon in Texas would be cool. CobraCon anywhere would be cool, Glenn. So Texas would be awesome I agree too. Agree with that. Yeah, CobraCon anywhere would Cobra be fun. In Texas would be fun. That would be fun. Um, glad you. That would be that. bigger there, right? Bring yeah, everything's to bigger in Texas. Yeah. Bring CobraCon to Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland's close to Cincinnati, right? It could be yeah, like three hour and a half drive. Down. Just jump in the car, my friend. It'd be fun. Cobra and Joel's hometown would be better. Uh, Brandon is asking if there's a place to find never been here. R2 commands. 
hacks, macros, whatever? Um, come uh, hacks, commands, macros, whatever. What, what I can tell you uh, is that we are in the process of shortly releasing a, a knowledge center that's going to be very comprehensive and, 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 and thorough. So kind of hang tough, Brandon. Um, we've, we've been actually working on that for quite some time, and it's actually quite around quickly around the corner here. Uh, but, but if you have any questions, I think we've covered a lot of stuff today. I'm not sure about hacks or macros. Macros are kind of like scripts. But uh, <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> is there any shortage of razors? Oh, no. well, no, right. we're, we're actually saving them for the medical staff who need them right now. Um, for the record, I shaved this morning. Okay. Oh. Getting ready for this webinar. I was thinking like razors, like <laughs> Oh yeah. no, stop Man, that. Man, that's I had like a dark There was a point in time that every Cobra employee had a really nice beard. And we hired Zach. Mm -hmm. Schedule no, for uh, schedule for up and coming webinars, hang tough, Paul. We're gonna be doing we are going to do that. This was a learning experience. This is the first time we've done this. Um, so hopefully this is valuable. We we're gonna definitely pull for more feedback. Uh, we're trying to make it fun as we're trying to be more casual here. Hopefully people enjoy that and not listen to us babble. Do you have any, uh, so what about automatic addressing the show? That'd be pretty cool. Um, Brian, we did cover a little bit of the automatic addressing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a light feature right now where if you put in the channel, uh, it will automatically increment the queue to the, uh, to the lowest unused queue on that channel for you, right? Um, but some, it's a little different than like Finale has it where we can like choose to address your show and it resets everything. Um, maybe that will come in the future, but we do kind of have a quote performance version of that today that Joel did cover. Just looking at these macros would be a shortcut to doing something like clearing a script or various troubleshooting. Yeah, again, I think I think our um, I think that our 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 uh, online help system is consolidates a lot of those steps. Uh, Kevin, Tony, are there any package deals? Um, if you have any questions on sales, you can email us at help at cobrafiringsystems.com. Zach is definitely happy to help you um, work through that. You know, obviously in some cases with volumes, we can be a little bit helpful. We try to be, but, um, but normally, normally not, but, but, you know, hopefully our pricing is affordable as is. So, all right. Um, Great. Uh, how, how about uh, I'm feeling lucky mode when you pick products. That's a great, that's a good idea. I'm feeling lucky mode when you pick products. I think that button would be good for those of us who have been drinking this whole time. That's true. <laughs> good, good question, Joseph. All right. Uh, Cheers, Devin. Um, all right, so we're out of Q. Okay, so we're, we're out of Q&A right now. It doesn't look like we have any comments, but so this is your time. Any other uh, any other questions? Any you guys have fired out? Wait for us on uh, future webinar schedule releases. Um, yeah, do you want to you want to you want to kick it off a little Carol Baskin, Joel? Outro it. I got, Outro I got it. to load it. I mean, hold on. Give me a second. Just click on the MP3 file. That's fine. Uh, not currently, John, on the visual stuff, but maybe in the future. So. Mike, stay safe, my brother. Repeat well, everything you guys, drank so much. That's okay. We're going to have the webinar. You can rewatch it, sober anonymous attendee. If you rewatch it, you have to continue the drinking ceremony. Yes. Repeat. <laughs> it took my cobra fire. That's been in bed, John. That's, you can do that. That's good. <laughs> Just like a, a, an 18M under each armpit. Keep you warm. <laughs> you Tell them to turn off their boat. Thank you, guys. Dale, thank you, Hugh. Thank you for coming. <laughs> That's a great idea. What? So my cursor, for anyone who did not notice, is me jumping, you know, like the jump man. And someone said, for the next session, can you turn it into a tiger? Ah, Carol, question, Carol Baskin. Yeah. Great idea. <laughs> Uh, Sean Herring, new firmware update. Yes, believe it or not, I know I keep saying coming soon on that with 5.1. It has been an unbelievable feat to get that in its final stage. We are absolutely, I can assure you, in the final regression stages right now. It's a daily, daily process that we're taking. 
um, that myself, Joel, and a number of others are involved in have not been forgotten, and we are just as excited as everyone else, along with the 6.0 release. The guys doing a straight upload and storage of MP3. Yes, we do store them on the server. It should come back down as 320 KBS. I don't think we're down sampling it to 128. Email us, certainly, Andre, if you want more specifics on that, but I do believe we're maintaining 30, 320 KBS on the... Yeah, right now there's no there's no compression. Yeah, we're not we're not recompressing it down to 128 on the downloads. So. Uh, okay, still so do YouTube products of your products in inventory. Um, I'm not sure, James, what you're asking about. If you're asking about Wiki Fireworks, you can go there. Uh, if you're asking about Cobra products in general, we have lots of videos on our website. I think he's asking if you can see the YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, you, I, I think yeah, I think so. If you double click on the firework within the firework section, I, th I think we still embed the YouTube video within the edit screen. I'm sure Joel could show that, but I'm I'm almost positive. Hmm? We didn't have a viewer, Joel. Can you just look? Can you look? Is it don't we the fireworks it? information? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. So if you click on any firework. Apparently, I've been scripting on a second. If you click on any firework here in your My Fireworks, it will bring up information for said firework. And that includes a video, right? So in this case, of course, this one doesn't have my video, but uh, here is the video if it does have the video. So I might be able to find one here. Yeah. Um, I don't believe, Matthew Shiner, there is a, I'm sure there is some max of MP3 file size that can be uploaded, but I think that, that, yeah, I mean, I, I, short of having something that's obs obscenely large, I don't think that there's any max that wouldn't be considered reasonable for a traditional firework show or even something that lasted several hours. So I, I don't believe there's a maximum. I've not heard of any complaints or issues with that ever. <clears throat> Are you guys hiring? <laughs> you can your <laughs> send your resume. So I was trying to find a video for your reference and I clicked on a few and I don't remember which ones their videos are associated with. So I uh, find one. But Jason Garbus, the next audio box. There, there is no next audio box. There's going to be an upgrade kit that supports uh, LiPo and an LCD screen and some other improvements. So that's in the later stages of development right now. Um, the characters for the audio file maximum, I think it's 12, not including the extension. 12 in currently. Five, in 5.1, I believe that changes to 40, at least 40. 40. 45. 45 so that goes away as among as well as a couple things where within 5.1 we don't care that the, the csv file doesn't have to be named cobra.csv the audio file um doesn't even need to match what's in the files so all the match all the questions we get about matching audio file to the csv script attribute like all that stuff just becomes a lot simpler in 5.1 which will be the stable release candidate for 5.0 you don't have to wait to 6.0 before you can take advantage of those features Yes, help at cobrafiringsystems.com is the right email address. Uh, show creator trial version, how to select full screen. I have oh, to scroll up. Screen. Well, you can you can use uh, F11. So while I'm on sugar now, if I click F11, see here it does go full screen. Yeah, is that, that what you're referring to? That's probably what he's referring to. Uh, 5.1 release date, Paul. Man, two to three weeks would be awesome. That would be really nice. So, I would have said, but we're hopefully we're in the final. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, yep, yeah, Rick. Lipo battery at eighteen or two. That's 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 coming. We're we're getting some final samples on the battery. We actually made it bigger on eighteen or two, so the battery is now bigger on the Lipo kit. So this thing's going to last a really long time. And once this, um, but but all the PCB, all all the design work's done and it's working. We're just checking out the latest battery size and functions. Uh, I don't know, Joel, can you ask that one? Time or feature limitations within the trial version? Feature limitations would include exporting and reports. So basically you can't export or see any of the report options. There is not currently a time limit for trials. And anything you do in a trial is available once you do activate, excuse me. Uh, Thomas Bell, why do you always release cool new stuff right after I buy my gear for the year? 
Yeah, it's impossible. We're always going to be trying to release new things. When there's, when there's something that's cool, there's always something cooler. Uh, but one, one of the things we really, really try very hard to do is make sure that whatever we release works with previous existing equipment. Um, and where possible, we offer upgrade kits for existing equipment. And, and our margins on our upgrade kits are extremely low um, to the point where we really don't make much money on, on, on those. So our goal is to benefit people who have purchased earlier. So we definitely have a, a philosophy and a mindset of supporting those. Who, who have been helping us throughout the years and not trying to exploit profits through um, through the process of upgrades. All right, um, commands. Yeah, so a lot of one of one of the things. Anyway, so, so a lot of these questions are kind of not necessarily show creator, which I think we can cover in more of a general Q and A because I know we have that plan for like an Ask Scott thing. So maybe we'll end up starting to wrap this up. So cool. All right. So are are we good, guys? Panelists, anything you guys have to um, to offer no i uh, appreciate everyone that did attend thank you for coming out and asking great turnout and being active we do appreciate it yeah thank you everybody um thank you for being great clients um we'll be posting this to youtube getting feedback on new seminars uh so hang tough give us a couple of days we're going to do another announcement and are you ready to outro joel oh <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh shoot! All right, guys. All right, thanks. Thanks Thank to you the all very much. Bye, all. Bye.